anyone who has uh, questions that are of a personal nature or maybe not, not good for, for the public, it's help me at nurmuhammad.com, help me at nurmuhammad.com inshaAllah. Mm. Sayyidi, so, yes. so, so, Sayyidi um, someone's asking if their kids are enrolled in madrasa and are hafiz and memorizing Qur'an but are bad mannered to their parents, what should the parents do? Yeah, this is a, a problem with the, the subcontinent culture is to quickly throw the children in to become hafiz of Qur'an. And when we went around and, and met with certain children at these different uh, schools even in the west, they never even taught them salawat and durood al-sharif on Sayyidina Muhammad And the problem is because they're like a sponge, if you just send them thinking that the might and majesty of Holy Qur'an and that's fantastic but the one teaching is, is contaminating the child and then that's more dangerous than the Qur'an that being sort of dressed upon that person. And we gave a talk that the knowledge is like a crystal clear water, it's the cup that poisons you. The shaitan offers the same knowledge, the, the reality that come and drink from this so that it's a temptation for everyone but the turuqs come to teach, it's the cup that's most important. What is the character of the teachers that are teaching these children? What is the belief of the teachers that are teaching these children? Whatever their character is, they're going to be conveying onto the child and that's where the danger. If they're of a different madhab, if they're of an extreme and an angry character, all those verses of anger and, and uh, all the verses of uh, that are of a fiery nature, that child becomes very fiery. And they begin to exhibit the characters of that teacher. So it's it's not so easy to to just you know enroll your child somewhere and, and think that you know by, by memorizing Qur'an they're going to be good. They may memorize Qur'an and be taught by an extreme person and now all those ayatul Qur'an become uh, used in a, in a difficult way. So to balance it one is to find that who's teaching these children, what is their belief, what is their khuluq in their character. And then to offset also and to, to exemplify is then with the salawats and durood al-sharif and keep telling the children that they have to make salawats, they have to keep making durood al-sharif and that the exemplar of faith and the example of faith is the love of Sayyidina Muhammad InshaAllah. Sayyidi, how, how may we communicate with proper adab? I often speak without respect or adab. Yeah, it's to be conscious inshaAllah wa alaykum as salaam is that to, to speak and, and to speak slowly and to think f before you speak. It's like a chess game that you have to think, what are you about to say? Especially if you're dealing with the shaykh and the shaykh staff because when you're emailing you don't know who you're emailing because you think you're dealing with the staff but right behind is the shaykh is listening and watching in that text and in that dialogue. So it's always a conversation thinking that, if I was to be speaking to Sayyidina Muhammad how would I interact with him? I would think, I would be nervous, I would be very cautious of the words I use and I would make sure that my intention and my heart is correct and then I would put out the question and the concern and I would never reply quickly or, or aggressively or angrily and that becomes the whole school of manners. Is the shaykh is the reflection of Sayyidina Muhammad and the students of the shaykh are trying their best to learn that way. So then they teach them, be careful, think before you type and write something and, and what is the, the niyat and the intention of what you're about to write. Make sure it's of a good intention that the energy is correct, don't ever interact with them without wudu. Make sure you're always in wudu and that you have the best of uh, sort of etiquette and, and understanding. You use your siwak, all of these so that your energy is always of a clean and pure nature before you interact with them. 
And this was the adab that we set our life with and dealing with our shaykhs and dealing with the, that reality. So that one day when the adab was so high, so high, so high, Allah will open for you then to deal with the higher authority. Because how could you not be trained in this type of manners and you want one day to be meditating in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad so the, whatever you carry of your manners you will carry that across the board. You say if you're a person who never says thank you, you don't say thank you to anyone, not your shaykh, not to anyone in your life. So if you're a person who doesn't care that you have wudu, don't care that you have siwak, don't care what condition you're in and just want to go and start the emailing and talking to them, then that's not of a good character. So they keep the highest ihtiram and respect. So that Allah inshaAllah one day open for them to be in that presence and presence of Sahabi, presence of awliya, presence of saints, presence of the companions and Ahlul Bayt. But all of them are watching to see what are your manners and how are you holding yourself with that shaykh. And if the manners are good and clean and, and pure then Allah begin to open for that servant even higher realities inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam wa Please how can we protect our mind from unwanted telepathy and mind reading? <clears throat> you have to be careful because now these are you know borderline different types of conditions and, and people who have paranoia and different issues of the mind. This, this tariqah training and spiritual training attracts a lot of people who have other borderline issues and don't allow those into the tariqah teaching. So this energy that we're talking about is safeguarded within the heart of creation, a level that shaitan has no access to. So when you're training to open your heart and training to connect with the shaykh and training, this is an encrypted location. You know this is more than 124 bit encryption and this is encrypted with light. So it means what's in your heart, what's coming to your heart, what fires is coming from the shaykhs, coming from the heavens, that's all sort of safeguarded and locked. This is what we're training. We're not training mental te te telepathy to sit there with your head and think about things and try to figure out things with your head and, and, and you know somebody's reading my head and reading my mind and then I'm going to you know put like tinfoil on my head to keep people of, uh, from reading my mind and no, no this is nothing to do with heavenly or we teach about numbers and then somebody says, okay I was born on on the March 21st and this and this year my stone is moonstone, what am I? No, no this has nothing to do with that. These teachings of numbers are the codes of the heavens, we don't care about anybody's birth date. This is about the numbers and Ayatul Qur'an and, and what uh, from heavenly knowledge is. Me and you our importance are not important in any of this, we took a path in which to negate ourselves. So all these teachings is related to the heavens. When you're trying to connect your heart with the shaykh that's an encrypted signal. You can never enter into the shaykh's heart but you're asking for the shaykh's light to enter into your heart. So that that fire is like the shaykh becomes like a satellite. Allah sends to Prophet Famatiullah, Atiya Rasul Prophet receives that light and guidance from Atiyullah, Atiya Rasul. Wa ulul amri minkum is the three satellites that are coming. Allah sends a signal to Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad takes that power and reduces it and sends that out to the ulul amr. The ulul amr take from the level of which Allah has raised them and then they step down that reality and send it out then to the souls of the students. And that's all through their soul, has nothing to do with their physicality. So those are heavenly encrypted signals in which they're moving to the students that are trying to connect to that satellite system. But this has nothing to do with somebody reading your brain and you're opening up your brain. No, these are… Th that's something different. And as far as the, the jinn coming and, and reading your signals and 
And that's why we teach then to deal with your heart because the jinn can read the head and that's why they come to the dreams and that's why they send all the dreams of people who like the dream world and they, they can imitate everything from the physical world. They can say, oh this your aunt was walking down in the market the other day and she chose ketchup and the jinn are watching these things and they're telling people who are interested in their head and for head things. But for the heavens that's a heavenly and an encrypted signal that, that requires then a, a different type of connection which is a living connection inshaAllah and that's why the muraqaba and the tafakkur and the training in that reality is so important. And the stronger your energy becomes through the muraqaba practices and through all of these practices your shield of protection becomes so much stronger that it pushes away the ability of these shayateen and, and the more malicious jinn or, or beings to come and approach you so easily because your field of energy has to be much stronger so that they can't keep coming and, and hijacking your, your television signal on your head and, and, and keep sort of waswasing and, and sending whispers into the head inshaAllah. And that's why they teach in the last days the importance of tafakkur because of the bombardment of energies and the battle with unseen forces that open in the last days. And that door is, is definitely open and everywhere now. Sayyidi, um, uh, what do you recommend? How long should our meditation be? As long as you can meditate just a few minutes every day just to make the connection and ask for the light to come into the heart, listening to salawats on Sayyidina Muhammad and just a few minutes after each prayer just to make the connection. As soon as you feel the energy and you feel that the connection is coming and you're understanding and establishing that connection, you can go a little bit longer and a little bit longer and you know until you're trained and you… you basically isolate yourself and, and you go for quite a bit of time. It's going to be baby steps and slow steps until you're strong in what your practices are and you begin to feel that fires and the enjoyment of the malakut more than the mulk and then you would meditate for many, many long periods of time. But you don't do that at beginning think I have to sit there for 40 minutes to make it happen, then you walk away from it because it's not going to happen like that. They want to see sort of consistency that sitting all the time asking to, to fill my heart with light and then you can do your awrad at that time, you can breathe at that time, you listen to the salawats at that time and to make that connection and, and to, to make that understanding inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Dear Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Forgive my lack of understanding, could you please explain a bit more on muhasaba, daily account? How can we break out of a trend of the same mistakes behavior? Thank you. InshaAllah by every night taking an account, that's the whole concept of the a, a nightly accounting of ourself, taking an inventory of yourself, every, every sort of… Uh, way of character cleaning has this and muhasaba is the Islamic understanding is that if I don't take an account of myself every night I will continue whatever I'm doing and that will become a part of my Islam and a part of my practices. And that's why the turuqs come to teach you, no it's essential that you take a path of muhasaba at night ask yourself that what have I done, what are my actions and the people and the places and the things that I like and dislike and who have I harmed and have I harmed anybody with my words and have I broken anyone's heart by my actions and by my words. And those are then significant sins in Allah's eyes that to break somebody's heart is a sin that Allah doesn't easily forgive. So that requires then a life of muhasaba that did, was I harsh in the way I talked and the way I acted and, and do I keep acting like that? And then at night I take an account of myself of all the people I dealt with and what went wrong in those dealings, what did I say in those, could I have said things differently and you, you can journal them. And then when you begin to journal you begin to realize, oh I, I speak a certain way to this person that's why they react and we begin to fight. And so you begin to find all of the flaws and don't ever find the flaws in other people because this is not an account of other people's souls and lives. 
This is only an account for you and you're worrying about your grave for if tomorrow you should die Allah's not going to ask you, so what were all those people doing and saying and how did they bother you and it was their fault? But the muhasaba to be true is that it's only my fault I'm interested in. That why this happened and what was the role I played in, in that action and, and why it went bad and why there was arguments and why there was fighting. Nothing to do with other people because that's their grave. That's all going to ask them how they dealt and what they said. But Allah wants to ask you that no matter what happened, how did you react to it and how did you deal with it? I sent this condition because I was wanting to show what your reaction would be. So Allah knows who you are, so when He sends a condition of course He wants us to see then, see how your character is, you have to change it. And that's what when it becomes true and I become honest to myself, I'm only worried about myself in the accounting. How could I have changed it for a better outcome and that is Prophet going to be happy with me in this outcome? If not then I'm going to try to fix it, correct it and also rectify whatever I've done wrong, say, I'm sorry I didn't mean to do that. And then I'll try to fix it going forward and to have better character and penalize myself that I should go and pay a penalty, I should give sadaqah, I should do something to stop this pattern. Because just saying, oh astaghfirullah and then keep doing it every day is not the best but to have a whole system in which you're going to apologize. So that's not very good to feeling to keep having to apologize to everybody the same day, next day. And then to pay a penalty so that you punish yourself and then you take your accounting every night that, I don't, I don't want to do that and cry unto Allah that, please change my character, make me to be a better person so that you'd be happy with me and that Prophet to be happy with me inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi can you please explain the importance of hijama? Yeah. That's, a, that's a, a process of purification not on the subject of the tafakkur and the, and the, the things that we have to do on a, on a daily basis. The reality of hijama has to do with uh, it's called cupping and the blood cupping not dry cupping. The cupping in which you, you make the, the marks mainly on the shoulder and the lower back and these are points on the back on the top below the, the, the shoulder blades where the iron of the body is stored. So the iron that is circulating throughout the body all the, the dirty iron of the body is deposited at the top of that region of the underneath the, the shoulders and that dirty iron has to be taken out and that through hijama and the cupping in which they scratch with three scratches and they put the cups to pull out with suction all the dirty blood that has a, a reality and in, in cleansing, a reality and in, in firasul and taking the iron and the importance of studying that your iron is, is the energy and, and the nazma and the qudra, the dressing the, the heart of the servant, the faiz, the energy that's coming all around, it's magnetism is to the iron of the body. So the iron within our body that draws our, our energy shield all around us has to do with the iron within the body. So then the purification of that iron is extremely important. So the cupping is, is an essential part of cleaning the iron, cleaning the system, making sure the iron is clean so that when we practice and bring our energy, the energy is, is at its maximum potential of, of uh, radiating around us and moving throughout our body. And when the iron is clean and the blood is moving through every organ, it's moving with a clean iron on it and sending that energy to all the organs. That's a, simplified way of understanding. So it is a tremendous importance, has to do with energy, has to do with firasa and spiritual vision and the, the cleanliness of the iron. And without doing that the iron and the dirty iron begins to deposit upon the body and becomes a source of many infections and many harms to the body. So it's like a building that uh, 
when the air just circulates day and night, day and night, day and night but you don't have new fresh air coming in and then changing the old filters and the dirty filters, you're just going to have this toxic air that just circulates up and down the building. So the blood it becomes just sort of toxic with dirty iron all over the body and just keeps sort of moving throughout the body. So the hijama was a way in which to bring out that dirtiness and to cleanse. The women have the natural cycle because of their energy points that Allah has given to them and the secret that they carry of, of holding creation within their womb, Allah gave them an immense spiritual energy. So as a result they have also their own system of cleaning their iron and cleaning their blood and that's the purpose of the, the menses and the cycle. It was a way in which to clean their blood cycle because of the immensity of the power and the secret of creation that's within their womb which is the haram. So there's no, no haram and it becomes the purified womb and the reality like the Kaaba. You enter into the haram means that this is a region of no haram and that's why the woman's stomach and her, her the rahim, the womb is of that reality. And for men it was battle, that through battle they would be able to shed blood and clean and purify but now nobody is battling and the men need to have hijama to, to cycle out and clean their blood inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Sayyidi can you, how can we differentiate between mind hallucinations and guidance inspirations or like you mentioned plants communication? <coughs> yeah because this is why we just talked the second before that. This is, has nothing to do with the mind. So if you're not training in our system and you're, you're just through your mind sitting and hallucinating and, and jinn talking to you and, and you talking to you and that's not this system at all. This is not about the head and thinking hard and I'm going to think and stare at the tree and look at the tree and the tree's going to talk to me. It's nothing to do with that. That said that this is a way of when I'm going to sit, I'm going to ask. That's why it, it's like a GPS system, you have to be very correct in what you're doing. I'm sitting and asking for my shaykh, the one I know and I'm talking to, I want him in front of me. And I, I'm going to visualize him in front of me and I'm asking that from the light Allah send to you like your satellite, begin to reflect that onto me. And I'm going to sit every day, two minutes, three minutes trying to make that connection. Asking from my shaykh, please send from the light of the, the fires of Naqshbandi shaykh, send from your shaykh, send from the shaykh, from the silsila. Once you establish that connection, everything else then will begin to multiply. So how can you talk to the plants if you didn't know how to even talk to your shaykh? And that's why you don't do that because the shaykh is someone living and that's why you need a living guide. Because if you start to make a connection and you start to send emails that, oh, no, no, and then you start like rambling on your emails, the shaykh can immediately tell you, no, 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 this is your, your mind and you must be doing something with the jinn because this is not at all correct in your understanding. And that's what calibrates you. When you don't have a living shaykh and you say, I'm going to talk to the plants, you don't know if that's a nefarious creature, a demon, or what is that you're dealing with? Because you can't see them, they can see you and you shouldn't be communicating with something you cannot see. But when you're told to sit and, and make your heart open and let the light of the shaykh begin to reflect from Allah's light into your heart, that's something different because you say, oh the reflection's coming, I feel energy, I feel myself being heated, I feel my chest becomes very tight, so okay good continue and do your awrad and zikr. They say, no, well, now I'm seeing I, I, sh I should, you know, leave my whole thing and sell everything and, and run to the, the French countryside. Then you say, no, because you're going to email and the shaykh is going to say, no, that's your hallucinations. Don't, don't do that, don't do this. So you can calibrate exactly what you think you're experiencing with your meditation by connecting with that shaykh. And that's why the nafs of people is, oh, okay, I, I, wanna, I, I want this person as my shaykh, but you have no communication with them. And that's, that's all that you want because your nafs doesn't really want uh, a discipline, doesn't want you know to be told yes and no and, and to do this or not to do that. Your nafs always chooses somebody far away that nobody can verify.
because then it can have you too all to itself and that's the danger and that's why they opened up the email. If they're going to teach this system there has to be a line of communication open. So the line of communication is the live zikr, so when you're listening, watching you're building now a heart connection with them. When you sit and meditate you're asking specifically, just send light into my heart, I'm going to do my zikr, my breathing and I'm going to do these practices and then you can email to verify. Oh it's coming to my heart now to, to leave and to run into the country. Then they can you know they can quantify that understanding and say, no that's not correct, continue and those are your hallucinations. Without that system then the person could be all over the place just thinking from their head and, and, and just hallucinating all day long and that's a danger, that's, that's they're against that and, and that's why it has to be in, in the system that they teach the way that they teach it. And that also answers the question for somebody say, can I, can I have this shake, that shake, this shake, that shake, you're going to be schizophrenic if you're, if you're going to have so many shakes. How, how do you know who you're communicating with and who's communicating back with you? Click the link now to subscribe.